Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, if you're installing a manual transmission into your project, if it's a vehicle that already had an automatic transmission to begin with, or even if it already has a manual transmission, if you're wanting to do a complete upgraded swap, you can buy a kit. The kit includes a transmission, cross member, uh, throw out bearing, hydraulic lines, bell housing, all the components you would need to switch out your transmission to put in a modern manual transmission. Working on the 2007 Toyota Tacoma LS swap, we're going to put in a Tremec TKX transmission in that truck. We did not buy, we didn't buy this as a complete kit. In fact, we sourced parts from different areas. So the transmission came from one place, throw out bearing from another. You can check the description below for some of the parts we've used to have a link to that to see if this is something that you can use in your swap. If you buy a complete transmission kit, that includes a hydraulic throwout bearing. The front input retainer ring, you know, the input shaft and retainer ring, it's going to have a pin on it like this. And that pin is so it will support the hydraulic throwout bearing. You see it's got three holes in it. There's also a raised ring on the outside there. And this adapter has a groove for that ring, and you can clock this throwout bearing in the position that you need. Now in this application, you can see how the bolt holes are on the transmission. So this retainer ring goes in like this. And we're going to clock it so that the throwout bearing is in this direction so that our hydraulic fluid line comes in from the driver's side. There's also a couple of spacers that go in front of this just in case we need those. The issue is because we did not get the transmission as part of a kit, we got it separately, it does not have this pin. So we've got to replace the utilize that hydraulic throughout bearing. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, before we begin, check out Silver Sport Transmissions in the link description below. They got a lot of cool parts. They have complete kits if that's what you want to use in your vehicle, or you can buy individual components like we had to do. Uh, with the hydraulic throughout bearing and the components that we purchased, they have a very extensive instruction sheet on how to install this retainer ring. We're going to follow that to the T. I'm not going to pretend to be the expert on this. I have not done one of these before, so this is going to be my first time as well. But the instructions, I've read through them. They're very uh, specific. They're well written. And this is applicable to the Tremec TKX, the TKO, and also the T5 transmission. So the first thing you want to do is I get the transmission up on a good stable work surface so I can work on it. In this case, I've also got a strap around it that goes around the complete my complete workbench here so that there's no chance that this thing is, is going to slip and fall or move around. It's stable. We also want the input shaft raised above the tail shaft because when we remove these this retainer ring, uh, there are some bearings in there, and we don't want this shaft to become displaced those bearings can fall down in the transmission and it's going to make for a hassle. We don't want that. So the transmission is positioned correctly. I'm going to remove these four bolts to take this, uh, this retainer ring off. And it may require a little tap, it says, with a little mallet. So we're going to begin by taking these four bolts off and getting this existing retainer ring off. Okay, before we begin in looking at the instructions, it specifically states the TKO and TKX, that this procedure involves removal of the transmission's front bearing retainer and replacement with SSTs, which is Silver Sport Transmission, custom bearing retainer. Do not allow the input shaft to fall out. Roller bearings may then fall into the transmission case, requiring transmission disassembly for removal. That's even written in red. That's why we're going to take our time here and make sure we do this right. The last thing I want to do is create more work. The uh, TKO and TKX mentions to prop up the front of the transmission before removing the bearing retainer. This is to ensure that the thrust bearing does not fall down when the bearing retainer is removed. Remove the four bolts holding the front bearing retainer to the transmission. It's a 13 millimeter. We remove the four bolts, now we're going to remove the bearing retainer. It says TKO and TKX, you may have to remove the front bearing retainer by tapping lightly with a mallet to break it free. Can I already move this a little bit 
and it looks like that is not going to be necessary. In fact, it's coming off, pulling up gently on it. I'm going to make sure this doesn't move. It says, save the gasket from the bearing retainer. The gasket must be used in the in-play measurement as the gasket itself is 0 0.01 inches thick. Bearing retainer comes off easy enough. When you look to the inside, this is one of the one of those shims right there. In fact, there's two of them. So we want to retain those. The instructions tell you to save the gasket that's on here. And it's not stuck down with anything, so it comes off pretty easily. The instructions mention next to place the shims, which were on here, take them off. Apparently there's two different thicknesses and one does appear to be a little thicker than the other. Place the shims into the new bearing retainer using petroleum jelly to hold them in place. Install the thickest shim closest to the race. So I'm going to put these back side of this the same way they came off. They already have some petroleum jelly or something on them. So they're kind of sticking together and that's good. So I'll put them on this. And I've already cleaned this surface with the razor blade to make sure there was no goop or any other foreign substance on here any silicone it says position the new bearing retainer without sealer so that the locating stud is at the top in the 12 o'clock position and attach it to the transmission using four socket head cap screws now at this point in the directions it tells you to make sure that the input shaft still turns and does not have any perceptible fore and aft movement or in play. If it does not rotate or has excessive in play, then you have to shim it and set the in play by doing a process that it tells you how to do. It turns freely and there is no in play. It's perfect. So thank goodness. Thank goodness we don't have to do that. That's one less step. At this point, it says to remove the bearing retainer after setting the in play. For the TKO and TKX to follow the manufacturer directions and spread that thin coat of Permatex or the equivalent on the mounting surface of the new retainer, reusing the gasket from step three. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to take the retainer back off and we're going to apply that thin coat of Permatex. And this is what, what they say to use and this is what we've got. That's the Permatex 82194. There'll be a link in the description below for the parts that we're using and any other specifics to the uh, uh, Silver Sport transmission as well. Okay, we cut the tip off of our tube. Now we're ready to put the Permatex on. We're going to slide this back off one last time. One thing I am going to do when I reinsert this is that this is dry. The shaft is dry and so is the seal. And I want to put just a little bit of lubrication on there just so uh, it's not a dry rubber on this metal. So it'll help it slip around a little better. Okay, we're going to apply this under the bearing surface. First, let's wipe it off. Okay. So we're spraying that thin coat of Permatex on here. Now we're going to reinsert this. First, a little bit of grease. Okay, in the directions, it said to use 12 to 16 foot-pounds of torque, tightening these bolts in an X pattern. We're going to do that. I have the torque wrench set at 14 pounds. I just picked a number in between the 12 and 16. If you're working with an older or used transmission, uh, I can see where it, there would be more of a concern about those bearings falling in there. Although you do want to be careful uh, in the entire process of, of removing this and removing the old retainer, uh, that was never an issue. Everything stayed in place and those bearings never moved. Everything is torqued in place. A little bit of the sealant's coming out, not much. We did have a thin coat. That should be just fine. Okay, now we're going to do the hydraulic bearing cushion measurement. And you do that by measuring the distance from this mounting surface of the transmission to the bell housing with a straight edge touching pressure plate forks. And then from there, you get a number. And in this case, I come up with three and seven thirty seconds.
So I write that down. We've already measured now from the face of the bell housing or the transmission will mount fingers on the pressure plate. And we've taken that number down. Now we've got to get a number where we put the hydraulic throwout bearing on the front of the transmission here. We want to compress it all the way and with a straight edge measure the distance from the front of the bearing to the surface of the transmission. We're working on getting the hydraulic bearing cushion measurement. We just took the measurement off of the back of the bell housing as it was mounted to the motor. We took the measurement from the flat edge of that bell housing where the transmission mounts to the pressure plate fingers. And that figure was 3 and 7 30 seconds. We wrote that number down. The other measurement we have to get is from the face of the hydraulic bearing itself, completely compressed to the surface of the transmission, that short distance. We calculated that as well, and that came up, the measurement was two and a half inches. Let me show you my measurements so you can see how this is figured out. The formula that we're using is basically X minus Y equals the cushion. The X number was the three and seven thirty seconds number that we got. That was a measurement from the back of the bell housing to the pressure plate fingers, three and seven thirty seconds. The distance from the compressed hydraulic bushing to the surface of the transmission was 2.5 inches. 3 and 7 30 seconds is 3.219 inches. So 3.219 subtract the 2.5 yields 0.719. Now the goal for the, for the gap here is to be between 1 8 of an inch and 3 8 of an inch or 0.125 inches and 0.375. Obviously the 0.715 is too large. We have two spacers and they're each a quarter of an inch thick. Actually when I measured them with a micrometer they were 0.509. So if we add the 0.509 for the two adapters to the 2.5 we get 3.009. So the 3.219 minus 3.009 yields an answer of 0.2, and that clearly falls between the 1 8th and the 3 8 inches. So that's perfect. The last thing before assembling the transmission and the engine together is to put the throwout bearing in a position where it can be mounted. Now it has a hydraulic line that goes to the, uh, the clutch master cylinder, and it's a braided steel line, but it also has to be connected before you can uh, put the transmission in. In other words, the throwout bearing has to be on the inside of the bell housing so that you can attach this metal uh, hose to it. And I'll show you what that looks like. We, before assembling the bell housing back onto the LS motor, we had the throwout bearing and we had to put this dust shield in place and run the hard metal line through that uh, dust shield into the throwout bearing. And you can see there it's attached right there. Uh, otherwise, there would be no way to do this off of the car. Uh, if you had the engine in the car and you didn't have the bell housing on, uh, you'd kind of be in a predicament because you cannot put your hand in here to attach the line to the throwout bearing. It's too small of a hole. Even if you could, you got all the clutch assembly in there. So you really have to put the throwout bearing in place like this first. Mount this up, we'll put it in the truck, and then once it's in place, and we start to insert the transmission, then the input shaft will go through the main hole, the guide pin will go through this hole up here on the throwout bearing, and that will keep this in alignment. And it's just a matter of then inserting the transmission. It gives us room to kind of twist the transmission if we have to, uh, to position it in place. The throwout bearing is going to be in the correct place automatically, and then we can just use the four bolts and mount the transmission back up at that point. Well guys, I hope you got something out of the video. I appreciate a thumbs up. Again, links in the description below for the parts we've used. Appreciate you watching. We'll catch you in the next video.